All right, guys, how's it going? All right, I'm doing this video because I deleted the very, the very first segment of this video. So I'm retaking it days later to tell you how I got to this point. <laughs> uh, my wife always tells me, quit pushing buttons. You got happy fingers, and I do. But this one was Pop's fault. I did it. I knew it. As I hit it, I went, no, and that's, there it goes. It's gone. That's after I hit the recycle bins when I knew it was gone. Anyway, what's going on? Okay, we're going to talk about the, the freezer, outdoor freezer. Like I said, it's um, uh, what happened was uh, the night before we were getting all our meats, my wife and I were talking about all the freezers running good, everything's going good. I said, yeah, everything's perfect. They're all We've got everything transferred over to another freezer so we can, because um, we're getting... Um, we're getting two pigs are coming back, which is the bacons, the hams, um, all that stuff. Anything that was cured, we're get, we are now receiving. So one box is for my father-in-law and one was for us. My son, I delivered that to him. So um, what happened was is it was early in the morning of me picking up the pigs. Uh, I'm talking it was like 5 o'clock in the morning or something. And I'm always up walking the dogs. So my wife leaves, I walk the dogs. And uh, we walked around the back of the house. And as I walked by, it's I seen a little light. And I, if you guys know GFI circuits, they have a little light when they get tripped. It was tripped. And yes, I know, guys, you do not put your freezer on GFI circuit. I understand that. But I do it, did it because that's one way I'll know if the power is tripped to that freezer instead of just warning if it's on defrost or whatever it may be, if you know what I mean. Um, it's been on it for eight years, never had an issue, but I understand and I know not to do it, but I am. Um, but anyway, thank God I did do it because this is what happened. Uh, it tripped. Now I'm freaking out. Why did it trip? I took reset it, plug it back in, immediate tripped again. I went in the house, put it on the uh, on a regular wall plug socket, knocked the breaker. I knew something was wrong then. Well, here's the deal. I'm going after meats and like, Two hours, three hours, two, an hour and a half to two hours from now, I'm going to be there at 8 o'clock in the morning to pick the meats up. Now I have a freezer that's not working that was already two-thirds full from our pig week prior. So um, I started testing and looking around, and for some reason I went to uh, YouTube, the famous world of YouTube, looked it up, and I found um, someone. Now I couldn't find nothing about the freezer, but I found people talking about refrigerator and this guy tech was on the ground and he was pointing and he's pointing at the timer and he started talking about it how they fail and all that and like i looks like i got the same type timer so now i'm really listening and he tells you to what he did to, to determine if it was a timer he took his apart the inside of his was smoked i mean it's white plastic it was all black inside it was burnt i'm like all right that's maybe what's going on with my freezer because it looks like it I took it apart. I took the timer off. I took it apart. Nothing's wrong inside. I didn't see nothing. Nothing's burnt. I put it back together again. And what happened was, is actually when I put it back together, there's a little gear that's in there. The little gear fell out in my hand. So I put it back in. Okay. I put it all back together again and I plugged it in the wall and it's working. So and I'm like, oh, maybe the timer is messed up. I, I didn't know. So I called the um, the appliance place that I buy all my parts from, Associate Appliances in Oklahoma City. I've been buying from them for, I can't tell you, 15 years. And they've always helped me out. Well, I told him what I had, and I told him I think it's a timer, and he was shocked. He goes, I don't think timer caused that. Tell me what's going on. I did. He goes, no, 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 stop. He told me what to do. He said, get on the ground, and as I tell you in this video, how to turn the back of that gear it's at the end of the video you'll see it and he says you can manually turn that gear with a screwdriver you put it in there and turn it and he says it that is it goes through a cycle it goes through defrost you know which ca causes the heater to come on causes the fan to come on to circulate that warm air across the evaporative core he said go in there and he had me on the phone and i saw it laid on the ground i'd spun it and it clicked on as soon as it went click the breaker popped and he goes all right he goes that's your defroster your your heater your heater uh, is probably shot. It's probably shorted out internally. I said, all right, okay. So um, he said, uh, I, I, we've got them here, and I got the bimetal tab. Come on down and get it. 
So I was bringing my son his meat, his pig. And so I stopped on the way back by, and they don't have it on the shelf. And it was funny. Um, anyway, they, I won't tell you what they said. Anyway, um, he said it takes about three days to get it in. I said, great. And what he did say is, well, just run your freezer for, you know, eight hours and disconnect it for five, six hours, four or five hours, whatever, in that time frame. And because that should be enough to let your core defrost enough and then, and then go under the ground, under bottom, and spin the defroster thing until your compressor comes back on again. Plug it in and do the same thing. So I did that for three. I did that from Tuesday to Saturday morning. Saturday morning, I picked the part up. So that's how how all this happened. That's what you're going to see now. And we'll go from here, guys. Today, parts came in. I went and picked them up. So I'm going to show you what we need to do and what I've got to get done. So let's uh, try to turn this around. All right. Show you what I gotta do. I got my wheelbarrow over here. I'm gonna put some beach towels in it, and then I have to remove from there down all those meats. These are turkeys and some pork. What are you doing? Because the panel is back here. These screws you gotta take out, and the, where I need to be is in there to get that heater replaced that heater element so let me get all this stuff from right here down unloaded get in there i'm going to get the panel start to unscrew the panel show what, we're, what we've got to do and then once i get in there i'll show you all right guys i got all the screws out now to remember all those screws there and those screws there are short length that screw and that screw is longer your knob, I just remember where my knob was setting, was setting at two and a half. All you got to do is just grab it and it pulls right off. Next thing you do is just grab your seals, right, the right and left, which I have down there, and just pull them out. Next, this comes on out. Oh, 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 we're still hooked to the thermostat. Let me go get that disconnected. Hold on here. All right. The two pieces that we will be replacing one is this which is that right there it's a bimetal tab second is this this is the heater which goes that's part of it it goes through here down and goes underneath all of that comes up and reconnects in this side so here we go so that's what we've got to replace you can see how this is frosted over looks like even the drain is frozen over so yeah we're going to let this defrost a little bit because some of that stuff's going to be hard to come across, uh, remove. Uh, this, that got your uh, thermostat that goes in here, all you had to do is basically pinch and push out. And it came out the back side of that there. So you just pinch it and you push it out and there it sits. So I'm going to have to let this set up for a bit and let this defrost some. And then we'll uh, get into replacing because all that, that line and stuff is all frozen. All right, I got it all defrosted. I got my drain hole all the way through defrosted. We're hitting bottom, so that's good. So next thing I do is we got to disconnect this wire, this wire. We're going to pull that off. We're going to disconnect this wire, but also we need to pull out the styrofoam. Oh, well, styrofoam's got to come out. I believe that one can stay in, or maybe we can pull that one out too. Um, there is some aluminum tabs that are down here that have to come out way over here. Or maybe they just fold out one of the two. I gotta see. There we go. They just folded around. I keep saying there we go, but it didn't come off yet. As soon as I figure out how they come off, I'll let you know. All right, I got this side disconnected and that disconnected. I'm going to tell you a little trick I noticed. When these were connected right here, hard to pull them apart. I had to take the top and twist them back and forth, and it, then it came right off. Here's this bimetal tab thing right here I'm replacing. Yep. And then now we're just going to 
pull that through and we're just going to weave it right on down. Feed it through. Need two hands. There we go. All right. So here's the old two pieces. All right, guys. I'm going to show you something. Kind of hard to see, but remember he told you about those straps? This is like a zip tie. You see the center? The bottom of this slip through. You can see the hole, and you pull it tight and you fold it. So that's how that stayed up in there, that pipe, or this heater element. Okay, now we're just going to go ahead and fish this one through. Probably better if, he, better if he had two sets of hands, you know what I mean? Now, I did notice that up here that that did go through. Let me see my... It went through here, so we need to try to rewrite it the same way that it came. All right, I need two fingers. I'll show you when I get there. All right, as you can see, it went between here. That's where that other one came through. So we're doing the same thing with that. Now we're gonna come over here. Once again, kind of hard to do this with one hand, guys, but it's gonna go through here. I've gotta set it through those straps. I'll try to show you the straps, but I don't have tripod or anything. I'm doing this with my cell phone. So let me pull that up where it needs to be hooked here get around this and then strap it up so the the heating elements to the bottom side of this all right you can see how it's through there all right i'm going to use two hands to do it but i need to pull this fold it under and that keeps that element right up at the bottom of your evaporator I did the same thing right there so we need to pull that up and then I got to put that piece of styrofoam in here and that locks kind of where all that sits. Then we need to start connecting things. We've got it all connected and it's pretty much uh, foolproof. You cannot get these reversed because this was a female. That was a male. Uh, that is the male and that is a female. So you cannot get them mixed up on this end. So it's perfect. We've got this connected. I got the styrofoam back in. I got the straps all strapped back up again tight. So now we just need to go ahead and put this backing plate on. Here's that fan. I put one of these fan motors in a long time ago, and it's still doing good. All right. And everything's drained. Hey, it's perfect time to clean your bottoms. <laughs> all right. Let me get this cover back on, slip this back in where it needs to be, and we'll put it all back together, and we'll plug it in and see what happens. Remember I told you about those two tabs you had to press, and then you just you press, I'm trying to hold this, you see that and that, you press it together and then the thermostat falls through the backside. So press it and push, that comes out and then this, then this whole panel comes out. And very easy to reinstall, just squeeze it from the backside and push it through and it clips onto here. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and uh, get our screws all back in. And um, once the screws are in their spot, and then we will start on uh, putting in our trim on the sides. Now, guys, with anything I always do, I always just start my screws. And then, no matter if it's automotive or this, start them. And then I work on getting these all put in like they need to be. So, let me get the screws all started up. All right, I got all the screws or easy they're not tight i lead do that so we can if we ever need to move it over just a hair one way or another to make things work that's what i always do so like i said i, I don't care if it's automotive whatever i always do that now we're just going to push that in its spot where it needs to be once we get all the seals in all the way down both sides then i will go ahead and tighten these screws up seal goes in really easy it's not a hard thing to get in you can see it just push i'm gonna tighten this all up i'm gonna put the thermostat um oh 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 look what i forgot guys don't forget this i gotta take it all back apart yep i messed up all right let me take it back apart 
All right, guys, we are working. Now, I did want to show you something. All right, hold on. I need to get this camera where I can see it. Do you see that little thing right there I'm pointing at? Okay, right there. This whole piece here is a timer. Okay, whole thing's a timer. This controls your, your, um, your uh, compressor to kick on right there. You can hear it working. This controls your defrost to work. And it's a timer. It just turns and click, 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 click. You, it, it just turns in here. All right. Manually, you can make this timer function what you want it to do. And it's there's gears in there. And you can turn it, turn it, turn it. It takes, I don't know, there's actually a line on there that you can see. When they line up, the compressor shuts off. Okay. Basically, you'll feel click. And when it shuts down, you turn it some more. And you, I think you you just keep turning it until you hear another click. When you hear another click, it ought to be, I believe, the heater is what's kicking on, okay, which is in the bottom. You've seen where I put that, all right? If you keep turning it a little bit more, then you hear the fan kick on inside, all right? And imagine it's blowing that hot air that heater just produced all across that core, okay? And if you keep turning it, all of a sudden it all shuts down. All of it. Nothing's working. All right. I'm imagining that that is letting things cool, war, cool off some more, giving it a break. And if you take that and turn that a little bit more, that compressor kicks on. So there you go. We are functioning. Everything's working. It's going through its cycle. The problem is fixed. And a minute ago, let me get up and I'll point inside here in just a second. All right. A few minutes ago, if you remembered, I said, oh, 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 I left something out. Okay, it's a styrofoam cover. All right. It, it covers the backside of that switch so no moisture can get on it, nothing. So I forgot that. So I had to take all the screws back out, pull it out, and put the cover over the backside, put it back together. As you can see, all the seams, everything's on. Everything's back together again. You can feel that cold air. Can you guys feel that cold air in there? Woohoo! Okay, so now all I'm going to do is reverse, put everything back together again. Now that makes you proud. Look at that. <laughs>